thank you guys for coming. Um, my talk is the intersection of awesome. So this will be intersection of AI and IoT. Let me first introduce myself. I just started talking. Don't you hate when people do that? Okay, rewind. We'll pretend like that didn't happen. All right, here we go again. I'm Tara Walker. Um, I work for Microsoft. I am a principal software engineer in commercial software engineering. Okay, so that's like a lie. I just took a job in Azure IoT engineering. So I'm actually moving to now create some of the stuff I'm going to show you today. So IoT is my thing. If you follow me at all on Twitter at Tower W, you know I love devices. And so when Erica asked me to do this talk, I wanted to do something that was going to be that you couldn't see anywhere else. So I didn't bring out the Pi, none of my microcontrollers. We're doing new-ish today because we're in the cool-ish track. So my first couple of times, um, what we're going to do first, instead of boring you with slides at first, what we're going to do is get right to the demo because I believe in let's get to it, right? Um, so what I'm going to show you now, wait first, see? I got to introduce my assistant because, see, I love her because she just jumped right in. Will you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Tamir Zane. I'm a developer evangelist at Cloudinary. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. today. Yeah. <laughs> see how your folks come through for you? So the reason why she's my helper is what we're going to do now, the demo I'm going to show you, is how you can now take AI and vision, train it really easily, and this is for every developer, and then have an IoT device then dynamically do some things on the edge. So this device I'm gonna show you can be either connected to Wi-Fi or not connected to Wi-Fi and then do some detection. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you about this device, because I kind of need to tell you what I'm doing before we get into the demo. First of all, you talk about new-ish, this is not out yet. This is coming out. The reason why I can talk about it is we actually have a website and everything else up for it. So what I'm gonna do today, this is called a Vision AI Dev Kit. It is a camera that I can then, an IoT device that I can program against, just like I would do the Raspberry Pi, my ESP8266. And what I can do, because it has a camera and um, machine learning frameworks on it, I can actually program against it what I want, have the camera stream to it, and then do some machine learning work. So this, if you go out, look for this. There's actually a public site. There's a GitHub repo, et cetera. I'll show you some of this. But this is not even out yet, so we're doing way cool new stuff. All right, so with that, let's get to the demo, because I believe in, let's get to it. So the first thing is, I don't see anything that's not super good. Uh, well, seeing stuff would be super good right now. Ha, voila. Okay. So the first thing is, obviously, I work for Azure. Uh, and so the, when I think of IoT, I immediately think of I'm going to take advantage of the power of the cloud. So let's talk about what we're going to do in this project really quickly. So I have this gauge reader. And what I did was I uploaded a bunch of different images, like green, yellow, red, et cetera, et cetera. So this website changes based upon if it's green, if it's red. So think about this in real life. If I'm on a dam and there's pressure and I need to know if it hit red, danger, Will Robinson, we need to do something, right? So I trained this model, and I'm gonna show you the training, where I upload pictures that had the gauge in green. And then I uploaded pictures that had the gauge in yellow, and I then uploaded pictures that had the gauge in red. Now, typically, if you guys are AI people, you know that this is not an easy concept. I have to pick what algorithm I'm going to use, if I'm going to adjust this based upon hyperparameters. Does any of those words make sense to anybody in this room? Two people. It's just you two. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, they want me to stop talking. <laughs> Right, exactly, you're right. No, let's see, I was gonna show how the rest of the crew can do it. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. All right, well, sorry, I don't know what I, we did to you with Matt, see? Terminator's taking over. I should have wore my shirt that says Skynet on it just so he would feel warm and fuzzy. Okay, let's see if we can get the screen back really quickly. Then we could possibly do some things. Okay, what, why you wanna act up with me though? I didn't do anything, I just got here. Well, we, okay, we're gonna keep talking while that's doing that, that's too much, because we have this, so, okay. So, usually what you would do based upon having all of this is you would have to do all this hyperparameter, do all this stuff, right? 
we have an Azure thing called custom vision. Now, for all of you guys, when I said which framework, TensorFlow, Keras, um, MSNet, I could go on. For those of you that's like, yeah, that sounds really good, but I don't know if I need to do a linear regression model or whatever. And again, for the two people that know what I'm talking about. Um, for the rest of you, you guys don't have to know about that. Because what's cool about this is we do. So we created this thing called Custom Vision AI. What you do know is, I'm sure, because I'm sure all of you guys are on social media clicking, looking at people's pictures, so you know how to do pictures. So if I know how to do pictures, and I know based upon what I want the pictures to do, I can create a project under Custom Vision AI and upload different pictures and tag them. So you'll see I have, and this is a really small subset, so the demo is not going to be as accurate as I want it to be, but you kind of get the concept. So what I could do if I want to search for tags, you'll see that I uploaded six pictures that had different gauges. I should blow that up, right? Because people are going to be blind. All right. So there are six pictures with gauges that have green on them, right? So when anywhere in this space that I wanted to train that these six pictures says this would be denoted as green. And the same thing goes for obviously red. I uploaded these pictures that said red and I tagged them. And let me show you just how easy it is to upload. So all I have to do to train is I'm going to add images. That's it. And based upon the add images, that's the train model. Let's go to some data. Let's find one that's red somewhere. If I could read, there we go. So that's red, even though I've kind of uploaded this one, this is fine. And now at this point, I want to tag this picture with the relevance that I want it to be. So I'm obviously training for green, yellow, red. So this is red. I want to train for red. And this becomes just as simple as me typing red. OK, what I want you to notice here, let me blow this up a little bit. What if I want to train for the exact, see, if I could spell yellow, that would have been good. So the machine, <laughs> the machine model is going to say yellow without the W, but I promise you I know how to spell. OK, so. If I want to tag this, but I also want to say I want anything that's the opposite of this, I can actually say red and then negative. But since that's going to mess up my demo, I'm not going to do it. But that's how you would do that. Very simple. So far, we haven't talked about any linear regression models, any classification algorithms, any hyperparameters. All I'm doing is doing what I know you guys know how to do is low images. All right. So I am going to tag this with red and upload this file. It noted immediately that this was a duplicate because, again, if you run a training, you want a different views of it. So, OK, I know you're not going to train it. So I hit done. Now, once I have these images up, all I have to do is hit train. That's it. I hit train and it's going to give me a couple of different things. So obviously, knowing that I had limited time, I wasn't going to hit train here. But here's the good thing about it. If I do hit train here, it's super quick. Only reason I'm not is I want to actually show you the demo first. Then we can go back and mess this up and do all the other kind of stuff. Once I complete that and it hits, it trains, then we can do a performance test. So let me blow this up. You can determine what's the probability threshold of each of the, of the items. Now, for my data scientists, I know you all are already knowing that this is super low. But again, this is a demo, bear with me. I, I would have trained it to get to 90, so you guys won't look at me shady data scientists. Like my coworker who was like, really? You're gonna show them 50%? Yes, I am gonna show them 50%. So you see, I retrained this last night just because I wanted to make sure. And it says this is going to have a precision of 66.7, which is relatively low. But you know, um, it's gonna recall it at 66.7 and an approximation of 50%, but you guys already know that, predictability of 50%. So you guys already know that. But I've trained this. And you can tell it what kind of training you want. So I want to do a classification of multi-class single tag per image, or do I want it to be multi-class that has multiple tags per image? There's a bunch of different classification types. And here's it is, you don't have to know a lot about them. There's a drop down, and we explain what each one of them are. So I went ahead and trained this. And then again, you can see uh, when I trained it, it had good precision for which was which. All right, so that's the first part of this. I've trained this model. I now have a model ready to go. Now you're like, okay, where's the IoT's part of this? 
So remember I said I had this new device, but there is a concept called Azure IoT and IoT Edge. So let me just go to the portal really quickly. Let me go back to the portal. So I logged into Azure portal and we have a concept called a IoT Hub. Now IoT Hub is where I say, hey, I want cloud. I want you to know more about this device. I want you to send stuff back and forth with this device, telemetry and stuff like that. But what I wanna do with this, what if I wasn't connected to the cloud and I want this to still run? Because if you're in this dam and it's about to blow, I'm gonna need the gauge to be right and not worry about the internet, right? So I can create what we call a IoT Hub. And this is just a resource that says, I am going to manage your devices, your deployment of your devices and everything else. But since I didn't want it to be all the way connected, can you guys read that? That's awful small. I mean, maybe I'm just old, but okay. So I want to, I want to obviously manage my devices, but I want this new device because I want it to run, whether it's offline or online, I want this new device to be what we call an edge device. How many people know what it means to have an internet uh, of IoT device on edge? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Are we serious right now? Okay, so let me, <laughs> so let me explain that. Edge means I have limited to no connectivity, but I still need to run. I'm on the edge. I've fallen off with the, that's how I would imagine. I've fallen off with the Wi-Fi. It's done. And I need this to still run as if it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So what I want to do is I want to create something, a device that's on the edge. Okay. So you'll see, I actually created two devices. The one that's online right now, immediately it knows it's online because it's connected. And I've denoted this device to be my AI vision device. Okay, that's cool. But how do you get the models to it? You still hadn't told us, get in there. So once I create this IoT device, let me shrink that because you can't see that. Once I create this device, it's gonna give me some things. It's gonna say, I need to connect securely, whether it's through X509 certs or what we call a symmetric key. And based upon that, it hashes this and gives me a connection string. Okay, cool. Well, I know I'm gonna have to get a device a connection string. But at this point, what I need to do is deploy some modules. So the modules that get deployed off the rip, whether you did nothing else, I just said this was an IoT device. I gave information. It's gonna create two modules called Edge Agent and Edge Hub. I'll explain this more in the slides. But what are those? Those are just Docker files. It's just a Docker container. No more, no less. You don't have to worry about creating a Docker container. We got you. So it creates this Docker container. And then from there, all I do on the device is download this runtime. There, really quick, I do a curl and then I do an install. Like literally it's two lines and it ha we have created scripts for you to do it. So I mean, we're making it super easy for you. I mean, you can be really a lazy developer right now. So we made a script for you to do this where it will download the Edge Agent and Hub. So now you have Docker really for IoT Edge because we try not to make you all pay stuff. Docker could come with licensing. So instead of that, we use the open container initiative uh, service called Mobi. It's just another Docker container, right? Docker, Mobi, there's different kinds of containers. I know Docker is now a verb, but there are different kinds of containers. This one is open source and free for you, so it will work in Docker and other things. So the next thing is, okay, I got these containers down. Well, I know you manage these containers. That's cool. But what if I want to create my own module, which I want to because I want to do this AI. So I created this module. I'm going to show you something that's super private. But we're going to pretend like you didn't really see it, but I need to show you the code. So you kind of saw it. <laughs> so we're creating, I told you I'm now a part of this new team. So we're creating this that actually will be open for you. And we're creating these modules that this one just happens to be in Pi. So you see it's under construction. So I'm going to just blow this up. I have it open in Visual Studio Code, but to go through it, I'll just show you. So I wrote some code. Um, I have Visual Studio Code up. I'll show you how to get that to it later when I under display more of it. But I wrote some code. And this code is actually, I want to push some models. I actually want to um, run different things. I wanted to connect to IoT and pull different modules down because 
What if I do connect to the internet and then I've changed some of this code? I don't want to have to go back to the device and try to do stuff. I want this to dynamically detect something has changed and create a, a deployment. Okay, so this is some code I wrote. I'll, I'll show you more about it when I get into Visual Studio Code, but we're in demo mode, so I'll go back to this. So once I have created this code, in Visual Studio, I have this option, and this is both in code and also in, can you see that? Because of course, I put it in black. I'm sorry. I'm a black kind of think person right now with this. So let me see if I can blow this up a little bit uh, for you guys to see it at all. At all. C come on. Okay. You're going to bear with me because I'll, I'll just blow it up in a minute. Bottom line is now in this project, I've said I want an IoT Hub project. Don't worry about it. You can't see it. I'm going to blow it up in a minute once I get this to expand. But I want to say for this module in this code, and you see there's some more code I'm working on, camera capture, uh, there's a, it's going to generate this Docker file. So what I do is I get this deployment JSON. This also comes from this device that so can generate actually a deployment manifest. And once I do that, all I do is say push, push it to this device. And the reason why Visual Studio can know what to push is if you see here, I have another device and it's connected to my IoT hub and it says, okay, you have Edge Hub modules running. This is the device. I'm connected to it because I've already done this handshake between Docker. I'm going to show you how to deploy it in a minute because some of this is really like abstract and you're like, yeah, lady, I don't get it, but okay, bear with me. So once IoT Hub knows about this, once it's connected, because I installed that runtime, it's now talking back and forth. It's just a config YAML file that connects it. Nothing more, it's just a Docker file. Once it's connected and once it sees it, I can create a Docker file that says, I wanna change something. So I wanna add this module that's called camera capture. I want to actually publish it to various things. Now, how do I publish it? Because it's Docker, it has to have a container registry somewhere, either in Docker. Well, the other thing I'll show you, and then we'll get to where my assistant will help me, is I, Azure has a container registry. So you see I created a Terra Edge container registry, and in this registry is where I'm going to house all of the different modules that I am going to have here. So I'm going to use this registry to push my new module, and once it pushes my module, then I have a deployment manifest that goes down. So now let me show you the demo, because this will make more sense when you see the demo. So let me just go back to this so you can see one more thing. So the last thing is I obviously pushed it last night. So when it sees it's running, yes, yes, running, that's good. What's really important about this is I can double click on my module and see all of the information about the module. So we'll see that, okay, it indeed, because it's reporting from the IoT device, this is where I have the, the test latest. The last time it denoted that it was running, which is pretty good because that's when I was sweating it was going to connect to the internet, was today at 11.30. It's still running. The last time it did a check or did something was 11.29, which means this is the last time I did a deploy because I haven't changed anything. All right. So now I have my vision module on this IoT device. Now, what can we do with this? So my assistant, voila, is going to now show you what happens with this. So I'm gonna bring this up in the screen and then we'll switch over to this device because there's not a clicker. So remember I came back to, I have this and it's going to be able to determine whether or not it's green, red, or blue, or red. Green, yellow, red, can't talk today. So if you see this little bitty screen here, I'm gonna switch over now. Um, you see this little bitty screen, this screen is hooked up to the device. Now it doesn't have to be hooked up to the device. If you guys have a VLC monitor, you can actually, I'm going to blow this up. This um, here, I can actually put this into a media player. And if you guys had a media player, you could actually stream from this device right now because I left it open just in case you wanted to. And see anything that the, the camera is recording, as well as when we do this, uh, what do you call it, machine learning uh, example. All right, so with that, I'm going to switch over because I know you can't see this, but we don't have any choice but to do the whole switching thing. Sorry. 
because that's what they told me to do. All right, so what she's going to do is she has my tablet. And my tablet has, as you see, now you see the camera. She has my tablet. And the camera is now recording. So you see, it's really faint, but you see this thing says green. Because right now, that's kind of what it's detecting. Remember, I trained it to look for stuff green, yellow, red. So she's going to take my tablet and put it up to the screen. And based upon it putting up to the screen, it should detect whether or not, and this is going to take a minute because we're doing connected versus offline, but it's going to determine whether or not the gauge says green, yellow, or red. All right. Assistant, take it away. <laughs> All right. And again, this is right and then she can change the gauge and it's kind of you see as it's changed it determines it has yellow and this is only 50 percent, so it's not going to be as accurate but you see it determined it was yellow and now she moves it along the line hopefully it'll detect red i know come on and this is funny i've been trying to hold it different ways this is what happens when Wait, let me move your hand. <laughs> and it takes a minute, go close, because I'm doing it connected, not disconnected, but go closer, let's see. If it goes back, go back to red to see if it'll do red, because I know they don't believe me, so. <laughs> so let's just wait a minute, because it's, it's actually doing round tripping right now. Because this can run, by the way, uh, come on, really, you gonna take that long? Embarrass me in front of my folks? <laughs> it likes your hand is red. That's funny. All right. But obviously, if you as, as you train for it to be more accurate, you'll get more accurate results. But that's simply what all it took was for me to then have a vision model to do this. Now, the model I had on here before I trained before was actually people. But I know it's going to be super hard to try to scan your faces and guess, so we had to change it to something else. But you can then push this camera, which again, you're talking about new-ish, it's not out yet, but it will be out. Uh, so if you are interested in it, if you go to the, oh, I got to switch back. Dang it. Manual stuff. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. All right. And I will plug this back in wherever it went. So you can see that the camera is still live. Okay. So this camera is not out yet, but it is a vision uh, kit that is made by Qualcomm that will be out shortly. And I will give you the link um, so you can train and do these models yourself. And that repo that I was showing you that was super secret that I probably shouldn't show, but too bad they can't say anything because I already did it. Uh, will be uh, released publicly as well. That's the only reason why I don't, I don't feel bad about it. All right, so now let me get back to the slides, but then I'll show you some of the code in a second. But let me explain some of that stuff I was trying to explain without slides. So the first thing we talked about, obviously, oh, doing this would be good too. The first thing we talked about is obviously AI Vision Kit. And at the end of the day, this is just an IoT device that already has some basic Azure functionality to it that's ready for you to then enable it with the cloud. You could actually do this, and I did do this exact code and everything else with my Raspberry Pi, but again, Raspberry Pi is so last year because we wanted to do new-ish that I didn't bring that. But the same thing is running with the Raspberry Pi. The next thing I talked about was Azure IoT Edge. So you remember there's a thing called Azure IoT, there's a hub, I add devices to it, I can add devices that are always on, connected, so just a normal device, or I can add a device that, hey, even when it disconnects, because I have that Docker module running, I want it to run. So IoT Edge is just a service that's gonna dynamically deploy things when you need it when it's connected. So let's say I had changed this code, which I didn't, but let's say I did, um, what it will happen on the device once it connect, the deployment manifest was like, wait, something's new. And it would automatically push the new containers to your IoT device without you doing anything. So it kind of gives you a little bit of freedom that you can change things from the cloud and dynamically happen to the device. Because though, yeah, it's easy for one device, but what if you have one million devices, right? So this is a way to do this. So you can also do cloud analytics for it. You can bring your own code, ML. You deploy, you deploy workloads as containers. We also, this actually, this device is running Yocto Linux, but we support obviously different OSs. 
Um, you can manage your uh, devices in containers centrally to cloud. You see that I use the container registry. You also can publish to do Docker if you have um, um, already have a Docker account, you're publishing thing there. We didn't pre prevent you from doing that. And then we make sure you can securely do this. So you don't want anybody to hack this and then start pushing other stuff. What if it's something really crucial, like facial recognition is now being used in some interesting ways. You definitely want this not to be hacked. Um, so it, it's secure. So I can either use X509 certs. I can use symmetric key hashes. Obviously, the more crucial it is, I'm going to push for the X509 cert as a IoT secure person. Come on, man. Just don't leave it out there. We don't want to have another Mr. Robot moment. So, yes, I do watch Mr. Robot. He is me. I am him. All right, so what are the concepts of IoT Edge? There are three things you should know about it. We talked about the modules, right? And the modules that you're going to get, obviously, are going to be the Edge and Hub. But when you write stuff, you're going to get a module um, image. There's an instance that's now running on the device, the module identity, and the twin. Now, what's cool about that twin is you saw that I actually brought up a visual representation of the twin. That twin tells me everything that's going on with the device. So it kind of does a little bit of check-in, like, you know how you had to check in. Or maybe I'm the only old person. My mom still calls me and be like, are you alive? But yeah, so just like your parents check in, this is a check-in, right? So with your module, parents, your husband, you uh, you have a check-in here, right? So that's, that's that. Um, and that module twin not only can say things like, okay, I had a module that was running. I can also do cool stuff like, what if this was a pie? And I added a camera, which I actually did for this. And I added a speaker and added some other things. In my module twin, it can say, oh, you have these sensors involved. And this is what the sensor activity is right now. So it doesn't just have to be about the containers. So that's part of the edge. The second thing with edge is the runtime. And, and what it does is it's going to do the security um, for you. So if any of you guys are familiar with HSM, TPM, and you've probably seen it where you're a company, but like, oh, you have to have a TPM chip in your computer. You can do the same things with devices. And we have literally what we call our security daemon that will go and talk at that level, kernel level, security level that says, hey, something's not right and shut it down. So we have security there. It also ensures that modules are running. I'm not going to read this. You guys can read. That's the good thing about this. But again, this is all the stuff that we kind of do for you that comes in there. It's like Prego. So there's three concepts of the runtime. There's the edge runtime that has a security. And so whenever you push it, it's something it does it is the hub and the agent. And then the final thing is the cloud interface that I see you. If you want to use a cloud interface, that's cool. But for you command line folks, feel free. We have a CLI that can do, I can do every last thing I just did in here on a CLI, but it kind of sucks in a demo doing a CLI because you guys can't see it, but you can use a CLI as well, as well as REST APIs. So you're absolutely covered for that. So the second thing I did, so that's the IoT portion of it, that I'm controlling this device or I can control any device for it. The second part of what I did was a thing called custom vision. So you saw I just went to custom vision AI. Uh, it's a service that we have and it's a cognitive service that then it allows you to build and deploy your own classifiers. As you see, my goal was I built a gauge and upload some pictures. But instead of me having to, even though I actually have this on here and I'll show it to you in a minute, busting out machine learning, writing some Python code, training, altering hyperparameters, testing different algorithms to see if it works, possibly testing different frameworks. If I really want, if that's not my gig, if I'm not a data scientist and I really just need to get a trained model effectively for vision, I can literally do this cosmic service. It has two features. You can either do image classification, so adding labels, or object detection where it'll say, oh, it's a person versus, so classification is, yes, I see that this is a person, but this person is tall or shorter like me, your height challenge, it could say something like that. So that's, you know, the classification or object detection is what is it? So when I was downloading here, making sure it worked, we actually test persons. So people were coming from the camera speaker room and they were like, oh, that's a person. Oh, that's a plant. So you can also do object detection from it. Now, for you hardcore data scientists in the room, we have not left you out. There is obviously Azure Machine Learning. So I could do the same thing I did with Custom Vision, but then I can actually build it and tweak it to my specifications. Obviously, doing it this way, you have much more control. You just need to you know, know 
how to do this stuff. And it's not a, it's not, you know, I'm not gonna say it's not hard because it could be, but you get to pick your poison is the, the trick with this. So for machine learning on Azure, you, if you're a Python ML developer, you may choose this model to go. If you're a big Apache Spark, big data person, you can choose the latter, which way to go. We have each one that's there for you. Okay. Um, the last thing is there are different components of ML solution. And so if you want to do any of these things to retrain the model, you can use either of the options I told you. Um, and then again, this is just to kind of show you how this works. So therefore, once I get this done, I can push this to, you know, I can push it to different devices. I can, you know, everything could be collated, co-located co in Docker, and then I can do it in different modern deployments. So when I combine those two, which is what you saw, I have what we call an Azure ML container, which is what I, I promoted. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the uh, module twin in a minute. I actually pushed my module to ACR, but I did something different with this because again, I'm using this device. And since I wrote this code, I actually store this modules. So this module for this device uh, looks for different modules, uh, types of modules versus the typical, like if I have a Jupyter notebook and then I compile it, I might get a different type of model extension. This one looks for a specific one. So I'll show you what I did with it. I did something a little different here. What I did was I actually made these in a storage file and then just put a URL to it. I even got super simple with it. I actually have a container that's in my code that's going to accept a URL that definitely will go and pull from the model dynamically. And then it's just then talking to the runtime, so the Edge SDK. So for this device, really simple. I'm going to connect my lap to an my laptop to an access point. I'm going to run through this setup process, just like you would do with the Pi. And then I will run a vision module. The default vision module you'll get with this is the person, you know, plant, everything else. Um, and then the build, when you're doing the building blocks, obviously I want to have a DevOps opportunity for it. So this current project that you see that we're working on that hasn't quite got released yet, when I build different things for it, I just stick it in Azure DevOps. So you can actually do that CICD pipeline. So these are just the steps. Nothing, nothing hard. You saw me train my model. I'm going to show you the storage in a minute. I stored my module, my model to Azure storage, and then I deployed it. And that's, that's it. Um, that was using custom vision. Well, let's say you are a data science person. I still would train my model. The trick is different this time. Once I train that model with the ML workspace and I get an AI model out, then I'm, I'm going to convert this AI model to something based upon the device I have. And then I'm going to then deploy this as a container in IoT edge. So a little bit of difference than what I would do there, not much. And then that module then just pushes that container down. So not super different, but again, just a little bit different than I would there. If I wanted to do this at scale, I could do any combination of these things. I could put them all in a module registry. So let's say I train different ones because I'm doing multiple classifications. Then I can have a scoring file based upon, you know, the code that I'm writing. Same thing, image goes across, no more, no less. Now the specs on this, because we're talking about new stuff that doesn't exist yet, you, you already kind of know the specs on the IoT common IoT devices. This one that comes out, that's coming out, uh, like I noted, it's running Yocto Linux. Here are the specs for it. So it has an SD port if you wanted, uh, SD slot if you wanted to push things in and out. Um, there is a camera portable. And if this, here's the thing, if you notice, you see that there's a rechargeable battery. So because this can be used as an edge device, obviously, if you might not have internet, you might not have power. So what you'll notice here on here, I, this is not plugged into power at all, right? Because again, if I'm sticking it up somewhere that it, that's the HDMI call for it, because I know you guys didn't believe me, but it's not, it's not connected to power. Uh, because again, you can stick these anywhere uh, and you can see this handle, we can stick it up and then do, do dynamic training. The final thing to say here, and then I'll show you the module twin where I put the, the storage as a part of it is anytime you're doing AI with IoT devices using Azure, you need to really kind of think about the various things. Key is for a module conversion for this, the custom AI, when I hit train, will ask me, are you training this? And you want something that would typically look like what would come out TensorFlow, what would come out Keras, right? But because we're, 
uh, working with Qualcomm on this device, we've actually added another option that says, I want a format that will work with this Vision AI kit. So I'll show you that last thing. And again, once you convert that module, then you can actually then put it in an execution environment for your Edge device. So with this whole thing, here's now an end-to-end -end experience. It can be run both offline and run in runtime. All right, so I'm almost finished other than I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the demo. But so before I do, let me actually give you some links so you can learn more about this kind of stuff. The first link that I, the first things that I did, like I said, I talked about, it was IoT Edge. So this is the links if you wanna learn more about IoT Edge. You can deploy and do everything I did right here. You can also do this obviously with any other device. I just wanted to do a new device because again, Erica was like, you're in the cool-ish track. So, okay, we gotta do cool stuff. And then this kit, which is not out yet, but this site is live. You actually can make a request to get it. And you can also see some of the code that um, is being pushed out there right now. This is the site where this camera is coming from. So it's Intelligent Cloud, Intelligent Edge, and we have this VI kit. All right, so with my last minutes, I'm going to go back to, did I close it? I did, because that seemed like something smart I would do in a demo to close the browser that's running. Um, I'll go and show you a, some of the few things that I didn't want to do right then. So I first will go and show, let's go back to here, because I said I would show this. If I created, let's say, a new project, just so you'll see, um, new stuff, because I'm so descriptive. You can see here, this is where I can say what kind of project type this is. This is on the AI side. Whether or not this is gonna be multi-class and multi-label, and what domain will it sit in? Is this general, anything? Is it specifically food, landmarks? Is it general, but I need it to be compact, because I'm storing this on an IoT device, so I need you to squeeze it down. Uh, and again, I have those options also for um, also for the other ones. Once I select this, you'll see here, remember I talked about, there are obviously lots of ML platforms, TensorFlow, Keras, Core ML, et cetera. I can say, hey, I want you to export this model when you finish in those formats, or I want you to do it specifically for this vision dev kit, because we actually have a special compressed model for this. And that is what allows me to do it in storage. So this is all I, I did with that. And if I create this project, then at this point I go back to the uh, fact that then I can load images and then start to qualify them. Last thing I'll show you is I talked about the fact that for this demo, I wanted to do something that involved the module twin versus putting the container down. So right now, and this is why this is a little bit slower than it would be if you actually threw the container down, I wanted to actually store this in Azure and then have, uh, talk about REST APIs going back and forth, have my module stored in Azure and as an endpoint going back and forth. So if I go back to my Edge device, let me blow this up. Another, oh, really quickly. So I have two Vision AI kits. One is off, one is on. When you create your, um, I, when you go into IoT Edge devices, it can show you all the ones that are associated with this hub. So if you're wondering why the other one is there, because it's off, and um, but it is a part of this hub. So let's look at this module. So I want to see, let me blow this up, the module identity twin. So each of these modules has different information that's involved with it. And when I click this down, this talks about things like last activity time, what's my connection state, how am I authenticating, and I can change, this is what, when I talked about a deployment manifest, I can actually take this from the, from, um, the web or from the portal, if you don't wanna do it by hand, export this out and change it. And this is exactly what I did for this. So you'll see here that I actually stored the, mod, the model URL, the label, and the config for this in Azure storage. And so it's going to actually, this is where it's pulling to do those classifications in real time. I specifically didn't want to do in a container because just in case things messed up, I could retrain really quickly. And if I retrain really quickly and stored it again, 
All I would have to do at this point is just post those URLs there. So you see that I had uh, two versions of this. Um, this deployed uh, two times. This is the latest version because it does do versioning. And you can see the time and dates when the latest was deployed. All right. With that, uh, I am on track schedule. What am I? Because, you know, I'm usually going over, so I'm so proud of myself that I'm not quite yet. To see, I did it on time. That was me, dog. No. Okay, sorry. I'm really excited. I always go over. Uh, so this is the time in this two minutes where you guys can ask me questions. And this is the storage account. I just stored those in. Any questions? I'm on time. Really? Thank you. Somebody. See, that's why I gave you that link. You can go to it. Um, it's we're we're fighting with it, trying to get it out as quickly as possible. So. If you go to that link, actually say, hey, I'm interested in it. We will send you a notification. It's ready. You're good. Off to the races. Any more questions? Yes, sir, in the back. Can you use already pre-trained models and pull them in to the, that system? Absolutely. Um, so you saw that I was just training this dynamically, but then it would say, OK, you export this model out. So for the first round of this, the people one, I was actually using the squeeze net, a trained squeeze net model that I already had. Um, and I just changed it for this demo. So absolutely, you can do that. And what you would do is take that model, you would put it in a container. Um, there are instructions of how to do this just basically with Azure ML. You can do this today with any device. Um, you would take those module models, put them in a container, create the manifest, ship them off to the device, and you could then your code, whatever you're, how you're talking to it, could do it. In fact, since you just asked, this code that I'm actually working on, and this was the code that I was recreating this for the Pi, um, but then I was, Eric was like, this is cool stuff. So I was like, no, we're not gonna do the Pi. But if, you know, if I was doing this, as you could see, oh God, it's so small. Um, but I was doing this for the Pi and I was writing different code for it. I actually then was, this was going to actually have my classification models modules be referenced from this code and then i would pull it in that way so you absolutely can do however you want and i should have thought about making this bigger later all right any more questions all right so i'm oh good yes sure i will post my slides i don't think i told too many secrets that i can <laughs> any more questions for you guys all right, thank you so, oh, no, one more. This device is from Microsoft, so why are you using Unix on it? So actually it's not from Microsoft, we're just um, working with Qualcomm to develop the device. It's not from us. We're just actually helping to make sure Azure can run seamless, seamlessly on it, so that this is actually a Qualcomm device. We're just, that whole partnership handshake thing, we're just doing it together. Any more questions? Thank you guys so much.